This video tutorial is compatible with Photoshop CC and Photoshop CS6. In this project I'm going to create a vertical panorama, completely free from any lens distortions. You'll see from the three component images that I've uh, got to you work with this project is as I'm pointing the camera further and further up towards the top of the building, the converging verticals are leaning more aggressively in. OK, now if I let PhotoMerge stitch these three images, we're going to uh, result in some uh, pretty heavy lens distortions and I want to create an image that is distortion free. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to um, select um, from the file menu, come down to scripts and choose load files into stack. OK, now the three files that I'm working with are open, so I'll just click on the add open files option here. Now there is an op opportunity or an option for uh, aligning the source images but I'm not going to check this. Okay, I want to interact and tell Photoshop which image that I want to preserve the uh, current perspective for. So I'll just select OK without selecting that option. Okay, now Photoshop will quite quickly um, stack the three um, images into one file. Now this uh, top layer that we see here has the best perspective. So I'm just going to pop a little lock on that and this will tell Photoshop that when we align these three layers that it has to um, uh, distort or uh, transform the two underlying layers to conform with the perspective of the top layer. So just holding down the shift key I'll select the base layer so that all three are selected. And then from the edit menu I choose auto align layers. We'll take the auto option and select OK. OK, Photoshop will take uh, a few seconds uh, to create the alignment that's required. It's working through uh, aligning the layers, but it's also doing some geometric distortion corrections uh, as I had those options uh, checked inside of the dialog that we just uh, visited. OK, it's working on the second file now and uh, as it, for each uh, layer that it's working on, it's looking at the lens data uh, connected uh, to that file. OK, it's working on the last layer now and uh, there we have uh, the alignment. Uh, we can see from the uh, top image here okay, that uh, there's a little bit of transformation, but most of the transformation is uh, happening with the upper uh, two sections of this image. OK, now we've still got some kinks and bumps and things aren't perfectly aligning. The final part of this process, of course, is to auto-blend the layers. Uh, basically, the photo merge feature is a combination of these two um, commands. So again, from the Edit menu, we'll choose uh, Auto-Blend Layers. And again, the default option, Panorama and Seamless Tones and Colors, and then select OK. And this will work a little bit faster um, than the previous command because uh, we're no longer looking at those um, um, metadata for the lens uh, information in those files. And as you can see here now we've got uh, those three images blended together and uh, we've got that seamless um, uh, montage that, uh, that uh, dialogue promised us. OK, now I'm just going to take the uh, lock off the top layer. So I've just clicked on that top layer and then I'll click on the little lock icon. Uh, to remove that lock. I'll select all three layers once again just by holding down the shift key and selecting on the base layer and then from the filter menu I'll choose convert for smart filters. This will allow me to work on three layers as if it was one single um, component. Okay. Now I'm just going to zoom out command zero or control zero and with the crop uh, tool selected. I'm just going to take in and take out the majority of that transparency sitting at the edges. I'm not going to worry too much about um, making this absolutely perfect because uh, when I've removed the final distortions from this image I'll probably have to revisit this dialog. So that will uh, um, be okay for now. Okay, now let's take a look at um, the, the new filter that is going to remove the rest of the distortions. Okay, we come up to the filter menu and choose the adaptive wide angle option here. Now when this image first opens in this dialog it'll probably appear as if there's more distortions than when we enter the dialog um, but we can fully correct this image inside of this working space. You'll see from the correction options here it's already chosen panorama. Okay, It's quite a smart dialog and it's actually working out what we're doing here. 
Okay, we need to focus our attention now on the tools on the left hand side and by far the most useful tool here is the constraint tool. And so this is selected and then we can come into the image and start um, basically advising Photoshop um, of some structural lines within the image that will help correct this image. We've also got a detail window on the right hand side of this dialog and this will help me find perfect alignment. So I'm just coming uh, up to the uh, bottom part of that structure, that red edge there, and then moving my cursor over to uh, the corresponding um, feature on the right hand side of the building and just a few um, uh, centimeters more and then let go of the mouse and now we have uh, that rendered as, um, as, a, as a straight line. We'll need to put a few more lines inside of this image. Okay, I'll find another area of the structure and then move over to the right hand side like so. And you can see the corrections slowly being removed. I'll add a, a third one at the base of this building and moving over to the right corresponding right hand side and again just using that detail window to find perfect alignment. Now at the moment the distortions are being corrected in one plane only and only uh, to the extent or edges of the line so I'll need to extend these to the edge of the pixels so that we have full correction across the width of this image. So just hold down the shift key and then drag these blue lines out towards the edge of the pixels to get full correction across this plane. Now occasionally when you're dragging you might only get a, a single drag before having to return and then dragging once again. Okay. When we uh, finally correct the verticals for this image they can be actually quite problematic and so I'll show you another way we can do that. Just uh, dragging these final three lines out uh, like so and this one will need a, a second click so I can extend and perhaps even a third click to come out to the edge of the pixels there and again extending this side and this one's making me do it a second time and uh, there we got full correction. Now if you want to correct uh, the top of the image and the bottom image we don't actually have any uh, horizontal lines to work with so we'll probably just work uh, towards the edges or corners of this image just dragging one over to the corresponding cornage corner of the canvas there uh, for full correction and the same thing we can use the uh, the move tool here and just uh, drag that image a little bit higher so we can see the base of the image here and back to the constraint tool and then click and drag out towards the edge now it's just uh, alerting me to the fact that I'm slightly off the canvas there so I'm just coming back into the field of view and then letting go for that full correction and again the move tool I'll just come back and center that image okay now I've got uh, full correction I'm gonna to have to work on the verticals so we're going to go back to the constraint tool and I can click and drag down I'm gonna to move to the uh, the base of the structure here okay and then let go now if I want this to be a perfect vertical I can just right click on that layer and choose vertical from the context menu and that will render it as a vertical and we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the building again using that detail window if I want this to be a, a vertical uh, from the outset then I can just hold down the shift key as I drag this and this will make sure this is a vertical just in one um, uh, uh, operation like so. We'll need additional lines on the outside of the building so we'll go from uh, top to bottom again on this side and again holding down the shift key as I just uh, snap that into position to make sure it's going to be uh, rendered as a, as a vertical and uh, one on the corresponding side okay from top to bottom holding down the shift key and the can coming in to the same area on the structure as I did on the left side okay now we have that corrected you'll see that uh, the distortion just uh, extends as co or comes back in quite uh, savagely just above these lines so we will need to extend these verticals okay so I'm just going to again hold down the shift key if this doesn't let me extend too far or in too many clicks I might have to let go of the shift key in order to extend this out to the uh, the edge of the the canvas okay it's allowing me to do it in two or three so that's not so bad I'm going to let go of the shift key now as I extend that and I'll just have to align that by eye this time in order to get out to the canvas edge and again coming and extending that out and again I'm going to line by eye this time uh, to speed this process up 
Now, this is quite time consuming but you'll see the uh, corrections uh, has not really been possible with Photoshop prior to this feature existing so um, it's certainly an improvement to uh, the, the uh, features that we've already had inside of Photoshop and I'll just make a final few corrections uh, to these verticals here as I work, got two more to go. I'll probably need to add some uh, verticals onto the edges of the canvas as well, okay, in order to um, ensure those corrections extend across the entire canvas area. We do have a couple of uh, shorter edges as reference here. I've got this uh, edge of the wall here, so I'm just going to click and hold down the shift key and extend that to the bottom of that wall there and again we'll extend this um, up to the top of the canvas area and again I'll probably align that to the wall just by eye this time and uh, we can zoom in uh, using the zoom tool uh, but for, just for speed I'm just going to use uh, the fit in view there and an even shorter wall on this side uh, not very long at all um, so I'll probably just do this by eye from the base of the image and coming up to the top here and again holding down the shift key to ensure that is a vertical and now we have a, a fully corrected image in both planes now it is a, uh, there is an opportunity here the the um, the building does seem to be sloping away and down so we can actually convert by using the context menu just a right click on one of these lines and i can choose horizontal and i might also choose horizontal for this baseline here and maybe if I don't want to fully correct this one, I can just uh, correct the rotation of this by hand by coming to the little anchor point uh, on this circle here until I've got um, the arrow with both keys uh, for the rotate. And I'm just going to reduce the amount of um, angle on that, maybe to uh, three degrees or so. Okay, and uh, we've got uh, most of the correction through there. If we want a small amount of converging verticals, we could come in and correct all of the vertical lines as well. We could just click on a line and then again with the rotation tools, we could start implementing a small amount of convergence. You might find that this is required um, when we're even closer to a building and perfect uh, correction of these verticals looks unnatural. Sometimes you'll get the appearance that the building is actually uh, growing towards the top of the building and this is a sure sign that we need to put some sort of rotation back into these verticals maybe just one degree or so to correct um, the appearance that the image is actually growing okay so now that I've made that correction I'm going to select OK okay because um, there's uh, the image has uh, been scaled down during this process uh, we'll probably need to revisit that crop and uh, we do there was an option to scale up inside of the um, that dialogue uh, which we didn't take um, and we're just uh, doing this uh, a further crop just to ensure maximum quality by not having to interpolate the file up. Okay, so just coming in and removing that final transparency uh, on that edge and then committing that crop in the options bar. Okay, um, as it's cropping, you'll see the preview isn't actually accurate anymore. You can see the, the verticals are leaning in, but as soon as that uh, crop is completed, we get the fully corrected building. Now, if I do decide by looking at the, uh, the, the resulting image that the, the verticals are um, actually appear to be growing out, even though they're perfectly um, vertical with the edges of the frame, this is a smart filter. So I can double click on that adaptive wide angle and come in and fine tune these adjustments here, these lines. Again, just clicking on them and coming to the rotation options there. Just for speed in this uh, tutorial, I'll accept that they uh, accept them as vertical, and I'll just cancel out here. Okay, if you've got a little bit uh, more time up your sleeve, then you could put a one degree tilt on all of those verticals, just to um, uh, make that um, building look a little bit more natural than it does here. Just to uh, finish up on this project, I'm going to uh, do some uh, uh, luminosity uh, corrections of colors. Now we don't actually have a, a luminance uh, slider to control how uh, dark or light the colors appear inside of the main editing uh, space of Photoshop. We have that luxury in Adobe Camera Raw, uh, but not inside of the main editing space. But with, there is a workaround that I'd like to show you, and that is to come in and select a black and white adjustment layer even though we don't want to convert this image to black and white. And uh, 
we can um, put the color back in just by selecting the luminosity blend mode. Now it would have been ideal if um, we started off with um, uh, no adjustment to colors at all so that when we come into those sliders we know that all of the colors are starting from neutral. Unfortunately if we click on and off this uh, visibility icon you'll see there are small shifts in colors uh, especially to those yellows. The yellows are getting a little bit dull uh, with that um, change happening there and you'll also see a shift in the blues as well primarily in the yellows however and so what I've done um, and is available from the markgala.com website is we have a preset that we can load and it's the ESP luminance preset and if I just click on that it finds much better settings for this uh, adjustment okay let's return to the layers panel if I click on and off that visibility now you'll see that there the colors are starting from an absolute default or neutral point um, the existing default uh, that Photoshop provides us with is not actually neutral. So what I'm going to do now is come into that dialog and uh, we can click on the on image uh, tool there and I can come into the image area and then with the uh, sky I'll just drag that to the left click and drag left uh, to darken that sky and this is the sort of adjustment we enjoy inside of Adobe Camera Raw but um, now that we're working with this um, uh, panorama it's nice to have that control uh, inside of the main editing space as well and now that I'm happy with that adjustment uh, I'm ready um, to uh, to sign off on this project <laughs>